Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today I am working on my 1.9 liter ALH block and I am currently in the process of building it up. Yesterday I honed it, I put the crank in it, I checked my oil clearances and fully assembled the crankshaft in there. Today is kind of the next step in the process. I got rods, I got new pistons. We're gonna put these two together and we're gonna put these in the engine. We're gonna check oil clearances on our rod bearings. We're gonna install rod bearings and maybe whatever other finishing touches I get to, we'll, uh, we'll find out how far we get today. Okay, so to get things fired off here, we're just gonna start by thinking about which way things are supposed to go. Now, from what I can tell and in experience, these rods can go any which way. What's important about rods is that the caps stay with the top parts and those orientations remain the same. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. Hopefully we won't mess that up. And then when we're thinking about pistons, these pistons are not all the same. I do believe, let's see, one, two, I think two of them are different than the other two, if I remember correctly, and it has to do with oil squirter location or something. Let's see. If we all face them that way, they all look the same. Interesting, one sec. Okay, so after some uh, research, because I know two of these have to go in a different way, it turns out that it's actually the valve reliefs that are different, and what's kind of fucked up is I have four of the exact same, uh, which is wrong. And let me show you. I am just grabbing an old piston right here, and you can see that the big side of this relief is over here where it should be, not over there, so uh, it's really blows. Honestly, I ordered these so long ago. So either somehow I ordered four of the same set matchingly, or they sent me four. That really giga blows. Uh. Mm, might be able to do it if you send them back like today. Okay. Uh, but I can't. Like, the problem is I'll have to give you like store credit because I can't refund really the payment at all. Gotcha. Well, I, I do need to buy the correct two pistons, so that would be fine. Yeah, just do that then. Just request RA and order the correct ones. Okay, awesome. That would be great. Thank All you. Right. Okay, thanks. Bye. <sighs> All right, so at least I can send two back, hopefully get the store credit and get the new two, but it means today I am totally porked on doing all four. Ah, uh, that's whatever, we can do two at least. We can do the first two pistons, we just can't do the last two pistons. And it sounds like I need to work out these details ASAP for this to work out, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. hey <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna put these two pistons in still, uh, and these two are correct. These are the number one and number two. The exhaust valves are on this side over here and then on this side over here. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble the first two and install them. We're gonna start out uh, like usual and just clean everything super well. For starters, I like to uh, get one of these rings in and there isn't necessarily a best way to do this. All right, so pretty much just like that. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. You definitely wanna oil these things. And then, you know, if there's anything heinously wrong with the with the wrist pin, you gotta you gotta make sure now. It shouldn't be too tight. It should slide through. It shouldn't be excessively loose either. But you do need some, you know, a little bit of play in there so that it actually has room to slide and get oil in there. So, got the first clip in. Now I just need to get the second clip in, which you know, easier said than done. Uh, Probably gonna go back to time lapse for that because this is gonna take me a few tries. But also, I'm just deciding that. So, there's the arrow to front of motor, 
which means the back side of the piston is over here. So when I crawl under the car, uh, I'm just going to put all the rods on this way so that the logo max speeding rods is facing away from the front of the engine. And that's just my preference. It doesn't actually matter. I think you could go random orientations, but I want all these rod numbers to be on the same side of all my rods once I get them in there. Well, that was kind of a huge slot to get those uh, snap rings in, unfortunately, but they're in now. Um, and interestingly, right off, I mean, I think, you know, both of these are like a slide fit, so it's fine, but like this one is quite a bit looser than this one. And I don't think either is necessarily bad, but that is a pretty good discrepancy. Hmm. And the more I think about it, the more I just don't like the fact that these are different fits. I went back and tried my old piston, and I've had this problem before with max speeding rods, is their, their small end journal tolerances are kinda ass, honestly. Uh, but like this one has the littlest bit of like wobble in it and I don't love that. I mean, it shouldn't be friggin' wobbling. And this one, I mean, I guess to some extent they'll have a little bit of wobble no matter what. They're probably fine, but I don't really want to put this together and find out that they're not fine. Instead of uh, risking this for like basically no biscuits, uh, you know, there's no point in installing this with it not working when there's zero rush anyways and I'm missing two pistons. <laughs> I'm gonna bring both of these down to the engine shop that's near me and just get their opinion on what they think. I went to uh, the automotive machine shop near me, which is Gun Automotive. I had a wise looking older man in a beard and a leather apron touch both of these and he said, feels good. So, <laughs> so I'm feeling much better now about it. I, just because I've had that previous experience of these parts not fitting made me a bit anxious this time around. But again, imagine just big guy, like 6'5", touching this, like, feels good. Like, you know that shit's gonna work. We now have two pistons and two rods. And, well, we have four rods, that's the thing. So I think the, the beta is I'm gonna install the first two, you know, full-fledged install on here. And then I might just check the second two since I can get that done today and then I don't have to come back and do plastic gauge shit later. If I'm careful and I wrap the top of this in a rag and then I do my bearing, bearing clearance checks, then I'll be good. So yeah, I'm gonna check the extra two rods too for clearance uh, and then take them back out because they still need pistons on them. We're gonna actually put in pistons one and two, but I'm just gonna wipe down the cylinder walls one more time, make sure there's absolutely no dirt or debris that we're about to scuff into our brand new bottom end. And there's definitely some still oil dripping out of this, which is mind boggling because this engine has been apart now for like six months. And open up your rods at least. Um, these max speeding H beam rods also come with ARP hardware, which makes me pretty excited because that means every major hardware item. Yeah, ARP 2000 gangster. Uh, that means every major important fastener in this engine that holds critical things together uh, is an ARP 2000 fastener, which is friggin' awesome. Okay, and then the way these line up after the fact is not like so. You gotta match numbers to numbers on these and then they'll go together correctly. It's very important you clean under where the bearing is going and also clean all the bearing surfaces. 
uh, especially fresh out of the package, get any oil or any other kind of contaminants that might be on them off them. Not that they're dirty, but they definitely can be oily. These bearings don't have any oiling ports on them, so you just throw them right in there like that. All right, that's one. And then you come here on the other half, and you just got to line up this tang, if that's what it's called. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I make up words as I go. Hey, uh, man, I don't feel like I can catch a break today with weird part issues. So check this out. The gap on this is that wide. Let me make sure this is in view. This is important. So the gap here is that wide. You can see that tang doesn't quite fill it. Here's my old rod. You can see the bearing definitely fills it and is definitely wider. So I'm gonna have to call this part supplier too, see what the hell. So let's sum up how today went. I came in to my workshop. I was ready to assemble my kind of medium end parts, like the rods and the pistons and things. And what the takeaway here is that A, engine building can be kind of frustrating and B, you need to be super duper ridiculously detail oriented and picky when you're doing these things because if you're not, you'll totally screw it up. So my first issue is that I ordered four of the same piston when in fact there's actually two different piston part numbers for the ALH. They all have the same oil squirter position but two of the pistons have flipped valve reliefs and if you didn't catch that while building your engine, you would turn it on and immediately ruin half your valves. It would suck. So that was part one. So now I have to send those two back and order the two correct pistons, which is going to take time. Fortunately, I'm not in a rush on this project, but I mean, it just, it just adds up, you know? And then I was like, okay, no big deal. I'll just put my two pistons and rods together which seemed like they had varying amounts of clearance thank goodness engine shop guy came together for me and you know took a look at those and was like they're fine so that was a relief but then immediately after doing that i put in what i thought were the rod bearings and they look honestly like they're 1.6 rod bearings or something but they're definitely the wrong size so not only did I have the wrong pistons today, but I also had the wrong size rod bearings. But that time it wasn't my fault. They must have picked and sent me the wrong part or whatever. It's definitely the wrong part. So I had to get those ordered and I just went ahead and ordered them from someone else at this point. It just goes to show you really, really need to be picky. If you're going to build your own engine, you need to scrutinize every detail just because it's a new part and someone sent it to you because you ordered it doesn't mean it's right at all not even a chance and then the other thing that's actually super helpful i noticed is i just happened to keep all my old rods and pistons laying around like there they are and i thought about throwing them away like hundreds of times you know because it's been quite a few months since they've been sitting there and i didn't because i wanted to wait until I assembled all my new parts and made sure they worked before I chucked those. And I'm super glad I did because if I had chucked them, I would have nothing to compare my new parts to and no basis for knowing if I'm screwed or not with the parts I have. So, you know, save your old parts till you have your new parts in. Once they're in and it works, sure, chuck them. But definitely, definitely, definitely just be so careful out there. You know, parts these days are shitty. People are doing their jobs as best they can, but people are still people. And then parts pickers don't always look twice when they grab stuff. And what it really comes down to is you, the, the onus is on you as the assembler to make sure everything is 100% right and in there and aligned and the correct oil tolerance. And it's kind of painstaking, but you gotta do it and you gotta stress all the little details, otherwise you will have a ruined, expensive ass engine in your car when you install it and turn it on and everything breaks. Holy crap, oh, I don't even know what to make of this video. I think I might might post it just how it is. This is the reality of uh, trying to build things. You just get totally porked sometimes uh, and you just have to wait. So I appreciate y'all for coming along on this uh, explorative journey of how to get bent on engine parts. <laughs> and I hope y'all have a good day out there. I will 
continue filming as I get the correct parts in, and then we can resume. 